Hey guys, Matt Sinus here, and today I am back in r slash regular revenge for episode number six, and I'm doing things a bit different once again. Last time I was doing things in terms of, like, during pay revenge, I added the, uh, the cards at the end of the video, so you guys can go and check out the playlist, check out the previous episode. Like, literally, if you're watching this episode, you can just go backwards in time and see where I started, which was not that good. <laughs> not as good as it is now, at least, because I'm adding something new to this one, and that is, I am not scrolling anymore, I have the stories pre-selected, so let's get into them. Never fuck with people on a drive-by twice. Was about 15 walking home with two friends. When a group of guys in their twenties drive by us and throw pennies at us. They come by a second time, but we see them coming this time and know it's them. My friend picks up a hand sized rock and throws it at their car, absolutely shatters their back window. The car screeches to a halt and we bolt and hide in people's backyards as it was night time. They never found us. Feels okay, man. I again one of the things is, be careful posting anything illegal. Would this count as illegal, or more in the sense of self-defense? And, pro I don't know if this is regular revenge. It might just, it might be, uh... Well, it definitely isn't pay, so it's gonna fit in regular, I guess. Yeah. And it's, it is a very short story as well. It's just like, hey, guys decided to fuck with us twice. They get their window shattered. Like, there's, there's no losing in the battle. Okay, let's move on to the next story. So you want to take my fridge for free by tricking me? Joke's on you. This is sort of a outsmart and sort of a r slash regular revenge story, I think. So my dad had a store that is at least three floors underground. The store was being closed down and we had to hand it over to the property owner empty. If there was anything that, would, that they would need to discard themselves, they would charge us a highly inflated price. After we emptied out the store, the last item left was a four doors Coca-Cola fridge that you can see in your typical gas station slash deli. If the property owner slash management has to discard it, that means the charge alone for discarding will cost us not only a deposit, but then some. We called the Coca-Cola distributor who gave us that fridge to pick it up. They said, they said that the age of the fridge and being three floors down, the cost to take it with them will not be worth it for them. They won't take it back. Then my dad asked me to hire some people on our own and pay them to properly discard it. I asked my dad, being the fridge running and all, what if I get to sell it? To which he replied, if I can, then whatever I get for it is mine. I go to this business di district where you can find new and used restaurant items being sold and bought. Tried a couple of stores with the picture of the fridge in my phone, and most said if it was on the street level, they would pay me five to six hundred dollars depending on condition of it. But they will not pull it up three flights of stairs. Then I found a guy who had a flatbed truck and said he is willing to give me four hundred dollars for it. He and his folks will pick it up. Great. A few hours later, I go to that store along with him and his buddy. I know two people to pull that fridge up. I was wondering about that myself. I remove the shelves of the fridge so that when they drag it up, the glass doors do not get destroyed. These two guys pull the whole damn thing up, all up by themselves to my amazement. I was praying that I didn't, that they don't get crushed to death underneath it as I'll be liable for it. After they put put it in the flatbed, they tell me they will not pay anything for it, and if I do not like the deal, then I myself can take it off their truck and do whatever I want with it. 
I see that they put me in a pickle. To which I respond, fine, just take it. The main guy then says, guy, okay, can you give me the shells from the store? I locked the store up when they took it out of the door. I can't open it back, I can't open it back up again and since we have to vacate the premise for today. I'll hand over the keys tomorrow and then I will pick it up and keep it for you, I guess. Now the pay revenge part. The next day, this guy calls back. Hey, can I get those shelves, please? I can't do anything with this fridge without those shelves. Sure, it'll only cost you $400. What? Cursing me. Then I go and leave the fridge. Then I'll go and leave the fridge into that store and or next to it. Be my guest. We have officially handed the keys over and that place is not re my responsibility anymore. Anyone throwing any trash is there will be responsible for their action. And you know this place is full of su surveillance cameras. You said you were going to go back in today. Just like you lied and blamed me, I lied too. Right after you lot left, I went back in, got the shells, and handed our keys to them. The guy curses a lot. Tell me where you live, blah, blah, blah. I just hang up and block his number. I use my Google Voice number for him, so it was very easy. My parents ask what, what, what happened. I said, sure, I did not make any money, but you wanted to pay for it to be removed. Look at the right side. Look at the bright side. I got it removed for free. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually a win in the end. Like, there is no loss. It got removed for free. There was no loss of money in the end. Dude had to be an absolute idiot. It's like, he just, we, you, that dude just had, gave OP free service. Or because he wanted it for free. <laughs> yeah, I love those entitled people that think, Hey, I can just... Actually, no, it wasn't even an entitled person. It's a scammer. <laughs> just a scammer. Just be like, hey, free fridge. <laughs> Old school airport made my life hell when my husband got in a serious motorcycle accident. And regret it when I leave a burning paper trail. About... Eight years ago or so, I worked at a small regional airport in California. Airports consist of actual staff that run the airport operations, communications, marketing, and etc. And then there's a bunch of staff that is both Fender and Airline Pacific. I was part of the actual airport staff and was brought on as part of the communications team. This airport was old. I'm talking grandfathered in to being able to continue operating even with runways that were close, that were too close to the runways old. Which means we weren't exactly a hip, high tech place to work. You largely had people in positions who had been in them for 10 to 20 years already. Staff was mostly late career senior, senior management with a reasonably small amount of support staff of younger blood. We were small enough that HR was actually off-site and handled by the larger corporation that owned the airport in Florida. I had been working there for about nine months when my husband got into a motorcycle accident. He was hit and run at 5 a.m. on a Saturday at about 70, 70 miles per hour, fractured his wrist, broke both feet, ow, got road rash where his zip... where where his zipper on his riding suit broke. Oh, and his boots had popped off. They were ankle high, but they were lace-ups, not the fancy moto boots. So he had to shave off, so he had shaved off part of his foot to the bone. No. Sorry to be gross, but it's important to note here. While he was, he was not going to be walking for three months, and was going to need to be at home care for a while. So I burned sick time as much as possible in that initial week and set up a meeting with my boss to talk about options. But let's divert from the story for a minute to talk about working at this old school airport with no HR. In my not nine months there, there were some questionable instances. One time I had left two hours early for a personal matter and my pay was docked two hours from my 
vacation accruals. Except here's the thing. I was a salaried employee, and California has strict laws about what this means. The company had no policies that said time would be deducted this way. I had to contact our HR in Florida, who confirmed that this was not kosher to do, and it apparently resulted in payroll having to reverse a lot of docked pay. Another questionable instance is when my manager and her boss tried to force me to attend a funeral. The airport put on a service for fallen soldiers when the uh, when they arrived. Th I was already aware of this service, what it was, how it worked, etc. However, I had not attended one as I was uncomfortable doing so, and it wasn't actually part of my job duties to run these. My boss tried to insist I attend one of these services, saying that she felt it was important for me to feel firsthand how emotional they were. I'm uncomfortable with death, even more so with funerals, and also f morally find it reprehensible to intrude on such personal and private service as a professional training exercise, especially when there's zero intention of me taking over these services. I had to escalate to HR to be excused. There are about four, more, four or five more of these types of issues, but nothing quite as big as those. Resumed to be resumed to the meeting with the boss to figure out how in the world we can make this work when I'm going to need to stay at home and eventually make him, take him to work when he's unable to resume office duties but will be unable to drive. Since I live in California, there's the Family Leave Act that will pay you 50% of your pay while you're out to take care of family. I don't know how you don't live in a major metropolitan area in California, but we can't afford our bills with 50% of a paycheck with one person, let alone 50% of a paycheck and no paycheck from the other person because they were injured. It wasn't an option. We ended up in collections for bills and likely homeless if we tried to make it work. I, ha I, ha I had had... I have had... Good feedback about my work and being a good employee so far. And there were no policies against telecommuting. In fact, another co-worker who was pregnant but was not technically in, on bed rest was full-time communicating, commuting, telecommuting at the time. My job largely consists of phone calls, emails, computer work and that type of thing. I'd go two to three weeks without facing an actual face to face meeting. I also have a work history of past employment for working both as a telecommute worker. Seems like a potential avenue to keep my work on task and make sure I keep an eye on the hubby, make sure he gets his medications on time and etc. I get told absolutely not. They don't let people telecommute commute. that one woman is a special case. No, they can't make an exception for me. They can't provide examples where my work can't be done remotely. It's just a no, too bad, so sad. It sucks, but there's not a lot I can do about it. We were very blessed to have friends and very family who could help out. After a few weeks, my husband is in a wheelchair and doing physical therapy. During these weeks, I'm, a full, I'm informed must take a full eight hours of sick time or PTO to take him to his appointments. I am also informed that I cannot shift my working hours by even an hour to accommodate appointments. It is absolute hell I have to leave him alone while he's on strong painkillers at times. Um, I've already burnt through most of my sick time in that first initial week. Most of my vacation time is now gone. I am job hunting like crazy. My boss comes in to talk to me about four weeks into this nightmare to see how I'm doing. She notices that I don't seem my normal happy self. I express that it's been really hard since I'm running out of PTO and sick time and I'm worried about paying bills and if I have to take unpaid time off to take care of my husband. Her response, which I will never, ever forget. Yeah, but isn't it nice to come in and get away from the stress at home? Oh, why? I just stared at her. I literally can't. I literally couldn't respond. I just sat there 
dead-eyeing her until she uncomfortably made some excuse to leave. The next week, I ended up not with one, but two job offers. I, I got it in writing that I could shift my schedule in various different ways as needed, confirmed that I didn't need to take PTO or sick time for his, dick, for his doctor appointments, and that I could start ASAP. And thus started my revenge. I run up every nutty potential HR issue, potential labor law violation that had happened in my time there. I pulled dates, emails, and summarized phone and in-person conversations. I wrote facts, not opinions, into 15-page documents, including the items previously sent to HR in Florida. With the help of a co-worker who knew what was going on, we collected the two small boxes of my personal effects and snuck them into my car without anyone knowing. Then I sent my document with my resignation letter stating that today was my last day on the, to the board, to my manager and her manager, the VP, director, the senior manager of HR, and CC the five other department directors. I had a call from HR in less than 15 minutes. The exit interview with my direct manager included her crying and saying she was sorry I felt this way Ugh. while dress gesturing at my documentation. My reply was a stone cold, it was certainly unfortunate how you and, you and leadership decided to handle my situation. I kept in touch with co-workers and suddenly the company had a telecommute policy they no longer made salar salaried employees take full days off for doctor's appointments, family or otherwise. Flex hours were a thing. Apparently one of the directors I sent the documents to leaked it for the rest of the staff and more stories like mine started coming out of the woodwork. The final smug moment though? The directors actually ended up taking management to court for violating California labor laws over a period of five years. They won. You be a dick, it's gonna bite you in the ass. <laughs> it's just gonna bite you square in the ass, and you can't do anything now. You're just gonna be running around now with your ass, like, why the fuck did you bite me? <laughs> Anyways, links will be in the description to the main channel and also the uh, channel that you're on right now watching this video with that uh, has links to the playlist and the last episode don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out ding ding i'm mad scientist mad scientist out